James. Wait, finished crunching. We can't have any more complaints. Our NPS is just dropping. It's through the floor. It's plummeted. All because of grain waves. Yeah, how likely are you to recommend this podcast to a friend or family? We've gone down from nine to like four. Actually, it's worth mentioning. We, we, we discussed this among ourselves. Hit me. Hit me with the review. We got some reviews then. Hit me. Hit me. Well, the thing that I wanted to bring up was the fact that, uh, you know, for a long time we had exclusively five-star reviews on the Apple podcasts. Yep. Except for one one-star review. Oh, yes. Yep. That's one right. single one-star review from someone who wrote... This was all the way back when we first went to being a paid podcast. Yep. It was when we first when we were on Substack mm. and someone left the review on Apple Podcast with the title of the review being Substack and the body of the review being disappointed. <laughs> and they gave us one star for that. Obviously, you know, I've said they were sad to see the the pay gate slam down on one mm. episode. Yeah. They didn't want I to get see that. they hate to see a young man like myself winning. <laughs> They, they, they didn't want to see the, the the very thought of something so pure as this being reduced to rank commerce mm. sickened them but anyway uh, at some point in the I guess year and a half since with that happened that person came back and even though it still says Substack disappointed they upgraded from one star to five and if you're out there king TWH 989 Melb <laughs> we're going to send you a mug <laughs> We're going to send you a free down round mug. So reach out with proof and we're going to make it happen. We're going to talk about Apple. Last week, we we did an episode on you know humanoid robots, which we've been thinking about for a while. We did an episode for our paid listeners on the social media bans being floated by the Australian government. Mm. We did float like, oh, should we do the Apple keynote, mm. which was like the announcement of the iPhone 16, and we were like, eh, there wasn't anything that super exciting there. Yeah, people can figure <clears throat> out themselves. But a week later, as we've sort of ruminated on it, we've decided actually it was more interesting than people are giving it credit for and not necessarily to Apple's credit. I'm not saying that what they announced was like an, a phenomenal lineup. No, no, product, exactly. But it actually says a lot about where Apple's at yeah, exactly. and where the industry is at in a kind of interesting and subtle ways. Yeah, we're not going into tech specs and all that kind of crap. But And, and let me say, let me uh, pre-announce, I'm going to float a theory that I've been, a hypothesis that I've been vaguely ruminating over that's not fully formed and um, let it develop Great. This is what people subscribe to down around for. Mm. You're gonna give, you're gonna give him a half form thesis that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, the best. That's how you generate alpha, though, folks. Because if it made sense, then it would be it would already be priced in. It'd be priced it? in. It'd be priced in. Growth comes from people with crazy ideas that don't make sense. All right. Let's talk about it. So the new they announced the new iPhone 16, 16 Pro, whatever. Whatever. Headphones, all this other crap. What? Fine. Um, some cool features, but we're not. Uh, we're not going to get into the. Well, features I mean, you know, well, let's talk about it because it kind of. No, I was going to say the features of like, oh, the headphones, like, and our hearing aid, and that. Kind oh of yeah, stuff. oh that's yeah. right. Your Air, your AirPods can be a hearing aid. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I mean, you know, that is interesting. That is one of those things where you look at it, and you're like, oh, that could be relatively disruptive. The the Apple. No, I actually like that. I do like that. Um, but. No, that's not what we're here to talk about. The Apple, the Apple Watch Ultra can now you can get it in black, folks. That's great. That's what we're here and to the talk new, about. And the new, the new watches are even bigger. Yeah, by a millimeter. Yeah, sure, great, whatever. <laughs> um, but the big takeaway from it was like, not that much has changed. There's not a whole lot to write home about with the iPhone 16 Pro, for example. Like, it's not like what there's a new camera button, blah blah blah. But you know, it's got a new camera button. We've talked about this at length, like. We're at peak smartphone. This is what, well, we're, we've passed peak smartphone. Yeah. Like there is nothing. Let me correct myself, even as I'm saying it. There is stuff you can do with the smartphone, mm. but that's when you start looking at like the Huawei trifold. <laughs> yes. Which we, we, we before we recorded this episode, we were at the pub watching a video on YouTube, which, which may have been AI generated, <laughs> which was, yeah, like unboxing the Huawei trifold, which costs like $4,000. And it's a, you know, it's exactly, it's a, like a foldable phone, except it unfolds into a full, like, bigger than an iPad, it looked like. 
Well, yeah, it's a big dog. Ultra it, thin. If you imagine like a huge, like an iPhone, like a 16 Pro Max or whatever, like the biggest iPhone you can get, even slightly bigger because Android, but then you're able to just pull it out three times. Yeah, into this very flat uh, creased monitor <laughs> that you can watch it on. And when you fold it back into phone form, it's like, it's the classic thing. It's like how you can only fold a piece of paper seven times or and then it reaches the moon and it reaches <laughs> at the eighth time it reaches the moon <laughs> uh it's like it's literally it's so thick it looks like one of those devices that you'd see a guy doing like a stock take in a warehouse with yeah yeah, yeah with yeah. A, with a stylus this kind of gear yeah yeah <laughs> that has a scanner at the top yeah, yeah it's yeah. got a scanner at the top yeah <laughs> <Beep. It's, laughs> you can sign on it um that's literally what it looks like except as we did say if you saw someone on the train and they were, you know, text, and they just unfolded the front, their phone. And they unfurled it and started watching, you know, I have no idea what you'd watch on that. Would, that would impress me. Well, like highlights of that Te- of that Kong do or whatever, that new game that everyone's frothing over. Oh, w- Black Myth Wukong. Yes. <laughs> yes. Is that, is, that's just Sorry, what, that is the difference between Mandarin and Cantonese. This is, <laughs> this is your assumption about what someone would be watching on a trifold. <laughs> the is most what, popular game in the world is, is, is that the, not an incorrect assumption what are you saying is the la- is the latest output from the chinese triple a gaming industry okay interesting i was gonna say ted lasso we'll but then i was like no you can get apple tv on android they have an yeah, android a services business and we'll get to the services business yeah anyway so it, well they're they like illegal in australia though well anyway what whatever you're not going to see someone unfolding up the train okay peak, the yeah, yeah we're but the point off is the back off you, yeah, you're, yeah. you're we're at peak smartphone no one knows the difference between an iPhone 16 and an iPhone 13, quite frankly. Mm. I mean, yes, the heads will know about it, the real true Apple heads. Mm. But it's not like the old days where, and I think we've made this point before, where it's like, if you had an iPhone 4 and you saw someone parading around an iPhone 6, it was pretty obvious which way it was up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas now it's like, you know, I can't tell what what iPhone people are using by looking at it. Yeah, and they I also probably look can't, like Androids a bit. And I know? can't I can't tell the last few galaxies apart. Yeah. Because people, have, they've settled on the perfect form of the iPhone. Yeah. It's, it's a rectangle of black glass. You know, it's got slightly curved corners. Mm. It's got probably an edge-to-edge display or pretty close to it, small yeah. bezels. So you've got some sort of like in-screen... Um, camera on your yeah, front camera, front. and on the back you have some, some ungodly, ugly... disgusting arrangement of cameras. Yes, which and you know every time they've tried to break free of that mold with like the galaxies or whatever, it just looks disgusting, but in a different way. Yeah. No one has figured out a way to put three camera lenses on the back of a phone that looks appealing. Humans don't like small, geometrically perfect shapes. In particular, round ones. You know, like yeah, there's that whole thing where, you, yeah, trypophobia or whatever. Yeah, have. exactly. Where you get the like lotus leaf and you put it on people's skin and like looks like there's little holes in people's oh, hands yeah, yeah. and that kind of thing. That was a thing on the internet like sure. eight years ago. Or sure, whatever. sure, sure, sure. Yeah, we don't like people don't like seeing circles close to each other. No, it's not. We're not biologically built for it. No, it doesn't exist in nature. No, other than on the lotus leaf, as I just said. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. And how many people? How many people saw that back in the day? <laughs> No, exactly. Anyway, let's get to the actual um, guts of this. So, you have the iPhone 16 Pro, you have the iPhone 16. Now, some analysis, analysis that is not my own, that is, you know, people are talking about is that, um, for example, Ben Thompson from Stratechery, he predicted before the event, they're going to raise the prices. They haven't raised the price of the iPhone in three years. This will be the year that they raise them because, you know, inflation, this, that, and the other. Yep. He then did a mere corporate and was like, God damn it, they didn't raise the prices. Breaking news, the iPhone stayed, the iPhone Pro stayed at the same price over the last, that it, that it was for the last four years. I.e., this is one of the cheapest iPhones you can buy because if you factor in inflation, it's like several hundred dollars cheaper than it was four years ago. Well, I mean, yeah, this is, a lot of people have kind of forgotten that because obviously over the past, and it's a bit different in Australia because they have the exchange rate situation, but like baseline price of an iPhone sort of elevated quite a lot over the past, let's say, five or six years. Mm. They started, you know, they pushed up into the realm of you're paying sort of low-end laptop prices yeah. for your phone. Um, and the, but got, the base level pro is like 999 US dollars. Yeah, which is, you know, expensive. I mean, it's it's in top-end smartphone or, you know, flagship 
phone territory. Yeah. But those are pretty expensive. But yeah, you're right. They haven't really adjusted it apart from exchange rate fluctuations. Yeah. For Obviously, down in Australia, we get fucked because we're rich and early adopters and we all just pay it out our ass. So we, you know, I think the base level in Australia is seventeen ninety nine or eighteen ninety nine, something like that. Whatever. Regardless. Um, but point being, Apple, the company who we all know, they love their margins. They love a markup. Um, why have they not put their price up for that long? And, you know, you can point to competition and this, that, and the other. But what I think an interesting point is, and again, this has been made by other people, it goes back to an episode we talked about um, probably about six months ago now, where I think I referenced a Jason Snell article on six colors, which was basically like looking at Apple services revenue versus um, Apple hardware revenue and has a pretty effective chart, which is like, okay, cool. So you've got Apple hardware revenue. When we talk about hardware, we talk about obviously like laptops, phones, AirPods, etc. That's significantly more than its services revenue. When we talk about services, we're talking about, as we've said 9 million times, what Apple wants you to think, Apple TV, Ted Lasso, what it really is, gems on the App Store and Google paying them $20 billion a year to, for, to be the default search engine, but yep. services, which is, you know, much higher margin. Services are like 75% margins. Hardware is only 35% margin, which... Is extraordinary. For <laughs> extraordinary for hardware. Versus any other hardware business. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So like, obviously, again, the hardware margin... When, when you think that like TVs are like 2% or something. <laughs> well, yeah, and cars are like yeah. 1.5%. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that Apple is able to... Ma- and they sell so many fucking iPhones and they take a 35% net margin on them. Very impressive stuff. However, because services is slightly more than double, um, even though services revenue is only like 30% or whatever it is of, of total numbers, I don't want to say too many numbers, but um, the net profit that Apple get from services is nearly hitting and it, it will one will very soon one day overtake the net profit that they get from hardware. Yeah, right. And, you and, with me? And, and just to to pause on that, they uh, this has been like a long term Apple strategy pivot yeah. because they saw the writing on the wall years and years ago, which they're kind of experiencing now. Which is like we are going to hit peak iPhone. Mm. We're going to get into a position where people are not going to feel compelled to upgrade every cycle. Yeah, the social pressure to do that is going to be far far lower. Mm. You know, we're going to hit our our sort of Mac penetration mm. there's only so obviously it'd be lovely if they could get a hundred percent market share of uh pcs but that's not going to happen mm. so they were like we need to get all of our ducks in a row to build a services business mm. which can be you know as you said unlimited margin not unlimited but very high mm. and with potentially infinite growth yeah right we need another growth driver and yeah including that is iCloud and you name it yeah. right um this, to a certain extent, explains why... And Jason Snell in his, is basically like, is Apple becoming a services business? And by services, you know, SaaS. Is Apple changing? We know Apple is this... Uh, it's a company that makes computers and phones. Is it becoming this a services business that you just... It's just a subscription business. And he kind of, you know, obviously it's that's overly simplified. And he mentions this in his article, as I mentioned back in the day. Like, it's always going to be a hardware software business you know, business. That's that is the key core differentiator with Apple, like that amalgam of software and hardware. However, what it shows, I think, that they haven't up uh increased their prices on the iPhone Pro in particular, um, for years now, is that this is what a services company would do. Get the hardware keep the hardware cheap and in fact discount it if you factor in inflation. Discount the hardware so that you can get it into people's hands so that they buy your services. If you want to keep growing that services revenue at 75% margins, the hardware should be cheap, should yep. be free. And also it plays into like the, you know, the Tim Cook strategy that is Steve Jobs I don't think ever would have done, which is like always have a low-end cheap iPad or a low-end cheap iPhone. I mean, you know, you can split hairs and be like, are they that cheap compared mm. to actual discount or budgeted devices? Probably not. But, you know, the they bo- have a refurb program. Oh, they, bo- they keep selling. You can you can buy the older um, the low like the lowest spec iPad is not is pretty cheap. Mm. Like you know, I, I can't remember what it is in Australia, but I think in the US it's like three hundred ninety nine or something. Mm. Um, which for a more or less a fully functional computer with some pretty significant limitations, <laughs> yeah. uh, is not bad. 
Mm. You know, especially if, if your usage is relatively limited. But again, that's very much part of the Tim Cook strategy. And it also makes sense in the universe you're talking about, where it's like something that you would think is not the natural way of Apple thinking about stuff is like, this is just a vector. It's a it's like a portal for you to get access to all the services we offer. Yeah, yeah. You know. And we've talked about it before. They've been holding on longer and longer to these older... Even last year, I think you could still buy a touch bar on an... On a, on a laptop. Mac, yeah. yeah, on a laptop. Like, because they sold them for cheap. They probably wanted to get rid of them, whatever margins. Um, which brings me to the next point, which is this year, the iPhone 16, like the non-pro model, is really good. It's really, really good in that it's the same chip as the pro. With, well, we don't know actually yet that if it's actually exactly, exactly the same chip, but it's got the same specs. It's on the same TSMC 3 nanometer N3B, the no, N3E, sorry, process. Uh, actually, side note, I was listening to this, like I was, I was, recommended this podcast that was all about like microchips and micro it's like oh you love this it's called like circuit or something like that I listen to the first episode and they're like oh yeah n3e is better than n3b i'm like no it's not no it's not it just has better yields like they're just all this wrong information anyway just be careful with your semiconductor kind of information sources get it from down round get it from down round n3e is not better than n3b even though it's the most recent tsmc three nanometer process it's just they had problems with the yields of N3B, so they actually simplified it. It's worse. So if, if you and also if you're going to come at Raf with podcast recommendations, you know, have a basic level of respect. At least fact check the most recent episode <laughs> before you send it to me. <laughs> Sorry, regardless, that's neither here nor be. Um, so my point is, both the iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 Pro have this nice three nanometer TSMC N3E process. So they're both on the same chip, almost, except there's a couple of extra. Whatever, not going to mention it. Advanced packaging stuff going on um, with the pro and not the non-pro. But point being, it's it's basically the same. It's eight gigs of RAM. Uh, comes in a bunch of cool colors. It's very good. My point is, right now is a very good year if you're not a pro user to you to go to the iPhone 16. And I think that that is intentional because Apple have kind of screwed themselves a little bit because if they're in services mode. And the latest growth driver, presumably they see is AI and some kind of AI subscription or upgrade or 30% of the friggin' open AI um, being like a pro premium or whatever that they sell that we've talked about before is potentially what they're thinking or, or is it like some kind of Google default search deal, but it's like default AI deal with whoever wants to be the default AI, whatever it is, that growth driver depends on people having the hardware that can actually run AI. And one thing that the, all of the AI on-device processing needs is RAM. And because Apple have been so friggin' stingy with RAM over the last Tim Cook years. And and beyond, like they've always been stingy with it. Yeah, and they've always, always, like one of the things whenever people talk about the Apple tax and Apple charging out the ass for their products, mm. like, you know, for many, many years, it's been the case that when you upgrade the RAM on a MacBook or whatever. Yeah, it's hundreds you're, and hundreds you, of You dollars. are paying extortionate prices compared mm. to just buying RAM off the shelf at a computer store or whatever. Yeah. Um, but point being, the iPhone... Only last year, the iPhone 15 Pro, last year's Pro model has 8 gigs of RAM and then both the the base model and the Pro this year have 8, eight gigs of RAM. Last year's iPhone 15. So, like... A year old phone cannot run Apple intelligence. It can't run the Apple AI stuff yep. because it doesn't have enough RAM. And so you have this situation where the Tim Cook doctrine and being stingy on RAM this whole time for margin reasons has come back to bite them because all of a sudden it's like, holy shit. If we want to actually use AI as a growth driver and a subscription driver and, you know, a services driver of revenue, people they, need to upgrade their phones. They need to upgrade their phones. Yeah, this is this is the other thing that uh, I mean, separate to this problem. I think the RAM thing is actually really key, and a lot of people aren't talking about it as much as they should. But this has been a an analyst sort of fixation for the past year, essentially before even before Apple announced the AI, the LLM and AI stuff it was going to do, and like Apple analysts and device like tech analysts know the problems we were just talking about where it peaks smartphone, people are happy to hold on to their phones for longer. And the other part of it is, as we were, we were talking about before we started the episode, actually, is that, yes, people still talk about batteries 
in terms of like, oh, it's planned obsolescence, my battery runs out, blah, blah, blah. But like the performance of a phone, they've been really, really good and yeah. far, far beyond what most people use them for mm. for years now. Yeah, like unless you're, you're gaming. Unless you're, unless you're playing like the latest, highest spec mobile games. And then, and what percentage of people is that? It's like, I want to play a really high spec shooter or like strategy game on my phone, but I but not on my... I don't have, like, PlayStations and other things to play these uh, games Yeah, on. I mean, like, there's, th- that demographic certainly exists, mm. but, like, the most popular games are not graphically intense and demanding. They're, no. like, you know, gems. Mm. You're popping gems. Yeah, yeah. You Monopoly Go. The, 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 just... point, the point is, like, you know, it used to be the time that a couple of years after you got your smartphone it would start to show you'd feel it like yeah you, you try you know, to open an app and it takes ages takes to, ages yeah. your home screen hitches and scrolls there hasn't been a problem certainly on iphones also on galaxies a lot of devices running uh, apps like lag i mean i don't know what's going on in android world <laughs> yeah, yeah but my understanding is it's better than it was yeah yeah for sure it is and um at least that huawei trifold that, that looked pretty snappy tri- that was yeah that was beautiful <laughs> but the point is like you know you're not See, you're not feeling like, oh my god, my phone is so fucking slow. I need to upgrade. Mm. If you've got a phone that came out in the last like four or five years, it's yeah. probably fine. Yeah. But anyway, Apple analysts know this has been a problem. They know that the impetus to upgrade your phone is lower, 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 lower. You can hold on to them for much longer. Even Apple permitting battery replacements and shit like that from third party, mm. well, not third party, but you know, using doing it yourself or whatever. So they they pointed at all this AI stuff. They were like, great. This is going to be the thing that motivates people to switch an upgrade to a new yeah, phone. Yeah, an upgrade super cycle. It's going to start a super cycle where like all these people, you know, all this pent up demand of all these people who are have phones that are two, three, four years old mm. are finally going to look at Apple intelligence and be like, I fucking want that. Yeah. And I can't run it on my device. And, you know... With the additional fact of what you describe, where it's like they actually can't, like it's not even like a marketing mm. thing where they're like, "All right, we're gonna make it only available in the latest one." It's literally because, as you said, their strategy over years and years and years has come back to bite them in the ass because they just don't have the grunt mm. on the memory side. Yeah, yeah, but again, for, from an Apple strategy perspective, the whole like upgrade super cycle. Of course, they want people to upgrade their phones. They want to still be making the hardware margins. But like more importantly, as I said, like they want to be getting people to sign up to the services they want to have this which they literally can't do yeah they can't do unless they have a phone that right now is like the pro from 12 months ago that's it like that's the only your phone is the only one that freaking runs apple intelligence as well as the other big thing is like they're hoping that people actually want apple intelligence yeah which i I don't think is has borne out as yet i mean plus uh, the fact they've they it's important to recognize they built the keynote all the marketing when you go to apple.com is built around Apple and Dell. Yeah, and, and like... And it's like Craig, Craig Federici. Federici. Craig Federici. Craig Federici, <laughs> who's like the software guy, basically. You see him at WWDC. Yeah, he's the he's head of software. The, yeah, the developer conference as well, typically. He w- had a huge thing at the iPhone event. He's not normally in the hardware events. Again, Apple Intelligence showing, another data point, just pushing towards this software story, this services story. He's talking at the iPhone event because the key thing here is Apple intelligence, software, software, software play, which like, yeah, do people want... We don't know yet how good Apple intelligence is. I think it's going to be helpful. Yeah, I mean, like it might be It might be good. I mean, like... But is it going to be like, oh my God, what, your phone can't do this? Yeah, you- I mean, I mean, a lot of the flashy stuff, like you can generate your own AI-generated custom emojis and you can do... No one gives a fuck about that. No one, and like, do images. No one gives a fuck about that. And then, like, what what are you left with? You're left with, all right, you can use the inbuilt thing to have kind of, like, an advanced spelling and grammar check. You can get it to, like, rewrite your messages in formal tone. Maybe some people are going to yeah, want to do that. Yeah, but not really. The, the, this is the thing, that the quality of life is going to get better, for sure. And that's the thing with the iPhone. We say, like, nothing much has changed. It's gotten better, obviously. The camera's gotten better. It's gotten snappier. Screen's definitely gotten better. This, that, and the other. Yeah, yes, and we're not saying it hasn't changed. It's yeah, gotten, yeah, yeah. It's gotten better, and we love that. We love every year at incremental improvements. We love that, folks. All good. Like, that's happening. However, like, my feeling is with Apple Intelligence, almost like the key features are just going to be, like, you start to expect your phone to just know stuff and be able to do stuff. You know, like, 
Yeah. Uh, I, I, was, I was thinking this about Siri the other day. I would have liked Siri to be able to... I was like, um, I want to stop at a cafe that I like and I need to get petrol and get to work by this time. Can I do it? Like, that would have been so nice to be able to do. I don't know if Apple Intelligence is going to allow me to do that. Probably the not things- for a little while, but I assume that's, like, the sort of thing they'd like to do eventually. Yeah. Which I think is the other part is, like, obviously they are just laying the groundwork for what this might eventually be able to do. But point being, like, little improvements like that, I can see that just, like, slowly, you know, I can talk to Siri a bit more naturally. I can, you yeah. know, I, rather than, like, in this didactic friggin' if this, then that um, way. But that isn't really, like, features that you then tell your friends about. They're just features you kind of incrementally expect. You're well, like, yeah. oh, it's a bit smarter. Which, you know, also comes down to the, the fact that, as I said, it's in the marketing for everything, but... It's not even the small print. A lot of these features in the initial rollout aren't coming for like six months, nine yeah, months, a year. Which is terrible as well. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my new phone on Friday. It's not going to have Apple intelligence. It's not going to have most of the Apple intelligence yeah. stuff. It's going to have like I mean, a couple uh, of like tiny things. In but... Australia, it rolls out after America anyway. Yeah. But they, even the bulk of the features are not in America yet. Which, you know, it comes down to the fact that this will be the largest, I imagine, rollout of you know, consumer-facing LLM stuff, mm. I guess. I mean, apart, I guess you could say ChatGPT is a product, maybe had a bigger exposure, mm. but, you know, in that top line, 180 million users figure, who knows how many people, how many, how much each person used of ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah. You know, it could be anyone. This will be like, and, you know, Apple have like reasonable expectations for how, effective it should be so you would think they'd be pretty tightly controlled and it must be part of the reason why they're taking so long to roll it out mm. is to like test it make sure there's no edge cases no no nobody's phone is like i don't know offering to suck them off <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Or, or whatever it's just showing like a really like a hot like a sexy hitler sexy hitler see that's you know it was bad for Google, but I feel like there's got to be some process within Apple that cannot allow someone to generate like sexy Hitler <laughs> custom emoji. That they're like that is that is P zero for <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah, they should, the frankly, they shouldn't even be allowed to Google it on our phones. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, so that could be a good reason why they're doing it. But it, you know, you can kind of see literally the gears turning in Apple's strategy, where it's like, oh. All this AI stuff, it's part of our services business play. Yeah. You know, everything is software, cloud. We're also juggling the fact that we have to do a bunch of on-device shit. Yeah, But yeah, also yeah. our devices largely can't run it because we've been, like, forcing them to subside, subsist on 40 yeah, months. because when we designed this friggin' phone three or four years ago, we're like, how do we ensure that our margins stay at 35%? Oh, and, you know, their whole thing was, and it was true for a while, it's like, you know, Four gigabytes on iOS means a lot more than four gigabytes on Android. Yes, because it's a far more optimized system that's that, designed. That, and that for has the always hardware. been true. And it's been well, true on Macs especially. But, but now, as a result, they have they've slammed into the brick wall of like, oh shit! Now we have an unavoidable problem, which the market is demanding. We put on our phones. We want to put on our phones. Some customers are demanding it, which yeah. is. LLMs, AI. And it's remarkable that they get it to run on eight gigs. To be perfectly. Oh yeah, frank. like eight gigs because is, is ne- pushing it. Next year. It's going to have 12 gigs, at least. At the very least, it's going to have 12. Because I know people get weirded out with when you don't just double RAM, but you can, folks. Folks, it doesn't have to be doubled every... It doesn't have to go from 8 to 16 gigs. But I am I promise, I don't promise, down round prediction, iPhone 17 Pro will have 12 gigs of RAM. How much RAM does the Huawei Trifold have? <laughs> I'm going to... Good question. Live, look, live look up. I'm looking it up. 16. They should have 16 in the back. 16. <laughs> <laughs> 16 gig. Yeah. So, you know, see? They're not stingy over there. You can do it. Yeah, not optimized. But no, the next the next phone, the next Pro will definitely have 12 gigs. And I reckon I'll go out on a limb. It's 12 months away. Who gives a fuck? You'll have forgotten it. I reckon the 17 non-Pro as well will have at least 12 gigs of RAM. They've got to fix the naming conventions at some point. 
Just like, like a, a something and a pro. They can't. Well, they can't. Yeah, they can't. Just they're gonna call tick- it an air, right, or something. They well, they're gonna do the thin. So the slim. Apparently, the rumor is next year they do. They're gonna introduce a new model called the iPhone Slim. At the moment, is the word. Surely the slim turns into the air. It's got to, right? Yeah, ma- no, but I mean, like, you can't keep calling them just going ticking up the numbers forever because it gets too high. We're yeah, getting I mean, pretty high. And when you get to like twenty, the uh, moment 31. if you if you cross the twenty barrier, it starts sounding like a Galaxy device. Well, you also get confused about years, right? Because like that's true. Actually, if you're yeah. at the twenty-one in the in the year twenty-seven or whatever. It's like what what year is it? That's actually that's a good point. Because I, I feel like they tried to because when they called it the iPhone ten, it was the iPhone X. X. Yeah. Well, they skipped the nine. There was no nine. There was no nine. I felt like they were trying to. Just switch Kick it, it up. back along, but now it's literally just like iPhone 16. It's they absurd. should they should have after the X gone to whatever year it is. That would have made it way cleaner. Which I should say, as I said, I kind of alluded to earlier. It is also it is still cool that the thing gets better every year, even if it's not like this year is not a massive leap. You get a camera button, great. Yeah, you get a camera button. I mean, the camera button's probably the well, I don't know. And then yeah, the cameras get better. The battery gets better. But that's good. It's like whenever I choose to buy a phone, I know that it'll be better than it was 13 months ago. Even if the, the form the form and the device has completely stagnated, mm. you'll know that there's some improvements within, within that stagnation. Yeah. And I still have the best other than maybe the Huawei, the Huawei tripod. Nobody, nobody... I got the same phone that, that Kanye has. Who's the biggest celebrity? I've got the... Does Sabrina Kanye have a Ka- Huawei? God knows what Kanye has. No, he surely has an iPhone. The point being... Sabrina think Carpenter of, probably has an iPhone. Think of the most famous person in the world. That's the beauty of like the democratization of tech technology, folks. They all have the same stuff as you. Yeah. Actually, well, but this is, this is when it starts to shift because they probably have a Huawei trifold. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's illegal. It's illegal for it's me. Ali- I, can't, I can't buy a Huawei trifold. You know exactly to due to uh, the trade war. <laughs> yeah, new Amer- cold war. Meanwhile, I was there walking around with something the size of a fucking MacBook screen. They're basically unfolding a map like back in the day. Mm. Like if you imagine someone just wandering along the street, just looking at a big map, that's what they look like. Did that ever happen? Yeah, of course. That's what the traveler out, would spread do. Spread out hands. Would you be wandering along with it with a with an octofold map? I you know I I was actually thinking about this the other day. I went to um a Europe over a decade ago. I think it must mm-hmm. have been 2011. Mm-hmm. Um and the one thing I forgot to do before I went over there was unlock. Remember he did, you had to unlock uh, your yeah, phone? Yeah, yeah. It was locked to Telstra. I didn't unlock the phone. And as a result, I got to Paris and couldn't put a new SIM card into it. Yeah. And this was back when school like schoolboy era. Hugely schoolboy era. And I and back then, roaming data and all that sort of stuff was mm. not really an option. Mm. You couldn't do that without paying an absurd amount of money. Yeah, yeah. Like rack up thousands of dollars. Yeah. So what I did, and it's still absolutely insane that I did this, is the the TripAdvisor app at the time, you could basically download a list of places that you want to go in a yeah. city. Um, and what it would do is like you would tap on it and it would just like give you a compass in that direction. <laughs> That's, that's, that's it was just, real. It, it that's was, real. It would just use the GPS, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So I vividly remember... Just following a compass? <laughs> that's so real. But, but, like, obviously, I would go on, like, Google on Wi-Fi and find out, like, okay, i got to get this train to this location. Yeah. Then you'd get off the train and just follow the compass. Follow the compass. <laughs> Due north. <laughs> I actually, I, I wish I experienced that. I remember riding a bike in Amsterdam, yeah, propping the phone up on the on the handlebars, following a fucking compass. <laughs> that was a, that was a truly unique. I was like a I was like a wanderer, yeah, in the 13th century or something. Yeah, I mean, people don't but remember. You don't get you don't get that experience anymore. <laughs> no, uh, back in my day, when, when I was when I, when I was literally a, a moron and didn't unlock my phone. <laughs> Actually, the, I mean, the peak of that is that I was, I couldn't find the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, uh, and I think it's because someone uploaded it incorrectly. I, I remember when I was in Berlin and I was like, um, first got into Berlin and I was like, right, 
I should probably work out where the wall is. And like, I'd been peering out at this like graffiti, <laughs> the little <this> graffiti <laughs> outside my hotel for a while. Like thinking, oh, that's really nice. That seems a bit political, whatever. My like, right. First thing I've got to do, let's work out where this wall is. <laughs> that's a bit- oh, oh. <laughs> What do you mean? It's, what, 60 metres away? What? No, it, it wasn't though. I was on a map thing and I was like, okay, there's my hotel. <laughs> Wait, what? what? It means that must be over? Anyway. Yeah. So this, this, is a, this is a golden age. Yeah. Uh, the other like other thing was um, downloading maps. I used to like, it's like, okay, yeah, you I'm going do- to this area. I'm going to download the map locally to my device. Yes, you could, you could do that. And Google, I think even back then Google Maps let you do it, but I was, I was using the TripAdvisor Compass. That's sick. I actually really respect that. Like, why not just work out where the North Star is or whatever? <laughs> yeah, totally. Walking around the cobblestone streets of Paris, trying, yeah. to, trying to direct myself. You Zoomers wouldn't understand. You wouldn't fucking get it. <laughs> you wouldn't fucking get it. You've never opened the Compass app on your phone once. Hey, Raf. Hey, James. Did you know that you can get an extra episode of Down Round? Every single week, mm-hmm. on top of the one that you're already getting. Yeah, I knew that. Well, yeah, obviously you know, but the but, person is, I'm using you as a vessel to yeah, explain. Sorry, as I'm the listener. No, go and tell me more, James. How a, much does it cost? A mere $7 a month, Raf. Okay, and where do I go to find out more about this? You go to downround.net. Okay, I want it. Well, I'm sure you do. I feel like I'm missing out by not having it. Exactly. No ads. Second episode per week, and a few other little goodies that are coming down the pipeline as well. Head to downround.net. Downround.net. And sign up to Downround Premium.